Hello, I am back again with another goodie for you, uh, beloved. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm going to post this video here, and I really want, you know, you to understand what has happened to you, beloved, what has happened to us as a collective, and what has happened to our ancient mothers. You know, it's important that we understand what happened to our ancient mothers and where we need to get back to. And there's also, you know, some men out here, too, that understand. You know, like I've posted, there's some men who understand, you know, our situation and know what we have to work on and where we have to get back to. But I want you to listen uh, in this video that I put together. Some great information, you know, so you can understand exactly who you are and all the things that had to happen for these changes to, you know, for this patriarchy to take over the way it did. And it's very important, woman of color, that you understand who you are so we can get back to where we were, our original state, and get that back. And it's important that we recognize these ancient mothers who paved the way for us. We certainly have some big shoes to fill. But we start that by holding our male counterparts accountable. Okay, take a look at this video and then we'll come back and talk about it. May I have the honor to present to you in memory of Mama Zogbe, the author of the Sibyls. When the Roman Church began to rise as an imperialistic power against Judaism, uh, because by that time the mixed race Jews uh, who had more knowledge and they were more grounded uh, in the ancient Kemetic uh, tradition, Hebrew tradition as well, they had more knowledge and it was sacerdotal power that ruled. Always keep that in mind. It, it wasn't just military, the sacred order. Whoever held the divine power held the power of the world. And in order to get that, you had to show that by seizing uh, or, or occupying that temple or that throne or whatever. Or well, they needed to usurp that from the Sibyls because the, the Jews were gaining more ground, especially in West Africa and in Greece. And so they, uh, under Constantine, Constantine, he destroyed the temples. Uh, in the book of Revelation, you hear about the seven temples. Those were the civil temples. They weren't Christian churches. Christianity, in fact, our tradition fingered so strong throughout the ancient world up to 500 years after the death of this person they call Christ. After. It was no way to destroy it because it was the original power, period. And nothing preceded it, nothing. You have a corruptions of it. But 500 years after, but those seven temples are, are the civil temples that were usurped by them. And those prophecies were against them. And what would befall them because of what they did? This is, now, keep in mind, this has nothing to do with Christianity. I'm just recounting history. They came up with this Christianity later. They have to center it around some kind of deity of their own. But they took her temples there. They took them in, uh, all throughout Turkey. The tiny empire. They took all of that under Constantine. And Theodosius, the, the military arm of Rome. General of Rome. They took her temples and they took her scriptures because the book of Psalms was found in ancient Syria where one of the greatest temples to the mommy deity Adagasis existed. It come out of her temple. That's where the book of Psalms was found, the so-called book of Psalms, which was just papyri at the time. You know, Mother, as I hear you speak and, you know, as I was 
reading your book, I, and I said this a little bit earlier, I just I just had you know so many emotions, and one of the the main emotions were just just how cheated black women. I mean, just how cheated, and just like as you said, you know, even doing the Christian thing myself at one time, just not even you know thinking or pondering that that is my that's my history and i'm celebrating the fall right of my mother temple right the slave mentality there you go it, it's and, amazing see, we and we have to get out of this very narrow box in which we view slavery uh in which we view the history and what that really really meant it, uh, we tend to just think in terms of european american slavery we don't understand that slavery began when the first mother temple was overthrown. That's how the city yeah. began to be sold into slavery. The tradition of the Amagasi is a slave tradition. It is bequeathed to the children of the slaves. In this country, there are Amagasi families. In this country, there are lineages here. It is bequeathed to the children of the slaves. But we keep looking to the uh, corruptions of her her religion, the Mecca, a uh, Mecca uh, Islam is not uh, uh, the Islam. There is the Islam of the white Arabs, but it, that was not their religion. Islam was already in existence, and it was matriarchally centered. That that's the it was the set the the second branch. There were seven major branches of the mother. Uh, uh, religions that the spirits taught her spirit it wasn't religion spirit Islam was one of them and in the seventh century after they taught uh, this warrior chief Muhammad he overthrew those temples he took out all the African deities he took her dove down he took the Pestanusian stone the black rock out and tried to move it But bad luck had, had uh, because of the war, those who knew who it belonged to went to war with him. It's all broken up inside there, but it's put together by wire. That's history that's not being told, and they don't want you to photograph. Not inside. They, will, they don't let you inside to see it. But uh, the Islam, that's, that's why it's at war. That's why it's, it's not, there's no peace there. When you do that, it's war for all humanity, not just for those who are guilty. These are, all of the religions are at war because they have all been usurped and corrupt and made into something altogether different. And the mother has been removed. African mother has been removed. It's critical that we understand that. And that our history is a continuum of this history. Here. Yeah. It's not separate from that history. It's a continuum of this history. And the perversions of uh, the Canaanites were a matriarchal plan. Were well, not patriarchal. And they were hated because they refused to disown the mother Right. Rest in power, mama. Your legacy continues. And we here, okay? Get this camera together. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt from Mommy Wada's book. Sister, please. You want to know some real heat about you that you're not going to find nowhere else? This is just volume one, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I got footnotes, all kind of stuff, highlights, dog ears, you know. But anyway, let me read this because it ties into what he's saying, right? It all ties in. Everything's coming together. Well, let me read this. Let me read this. Let me read this. Let me read this. In spite of Egypt's patriarchal military might, the kings and pharaohs of Egypt still had to capitulate to the conquered and declining matriarchs whom they still must claim as their divine blood and spiritual inheritance. So even though these women were declining, they were being, they were fighting this gender war, right? And they were being conquered, but at the same time, they still had to capitulate to them because they held the sacred bloodline. This is what this all this shit is about. But anyway, let's keep going. This inescapable fact 
as well as her exclusive sacred dodal authority and political influence in the world. It generated much jealousy, envy, and resentment towards them. The world hated them because they had the power, okay? Not money power, spiritual power. We still got it though, we still got it. So much that it is alleged that a thousand years later, as the matriarchal rule gave way to a new wave of patriarchal revolts, the powerful priesthoods of Amon and Kanun and the clans of Horos boldly dared to do something that was never done before. They began invading and usurping the holy temples of these divine African mothers starting in Thebes. Yes, yes, honey, yes. That guy he's talking about, his priesthood, his clan is responsible for the fall of the Sibline Oracle. So let's continue on. Let me read this one more piece here. Those temples of priest of no, those temple priest of Amons who revolted against them slaughtered the ancestral python of the Sibyls, a deliberate act of divine warfare. That centuries later, the first king of Dahomey is alleged to have committed his takeover of the sacred odal power against the matriarchal clans of West Africa. Right. After Amon's priests slaughtered the sacred python, they demanded a separate grand temple to be built to Apollo and to Zeus, which is no more than Amun and Horos atop them. And these priests proceeded to rearrange the cosmological pantheon, placing themselves at their head. They replaced the dove with the eagle. Right. I paraphrase that, but this is all in here. Y'all need to go check this out if you want to find out the truth of your story, sister. So some people may be in their egos, but it's okay. So a lot of people want to say that men carry the seed of life, but they don't carry the seed of life. They carry the spark of life. Women carry the seed. The seed contains everything it needs in order to grow into be a tree or in order to grow into be a human. The woman has all of that. It has all the genetic codes within her seed in order to become a fully grown human being. The only thing she's missing is the spark of life. She can no longer awaken the seeds within herself because she has fallen and she has fallen asleep. That God is part of her that was able to have a immaculate conception has been put to sleep. So now she needs her counterpart, the male, us, her God, in order to awaken one of her seeds. So the sperm is like water akin to a seed. Her wound is the soil which it's buried in. The sperm is like electricity it shoots fast through the wound and when it hits that egg it awakens it and starts to process but everything else is done by the mother and then you have the possibility of the y chromosome basically infecting the x chromosome and causing it to mutate into a y chromosome which means that x has to break off one of its legs and become a y so if women have two fully X chromosomes and males have X and Y, there's no way that we could have given any genetics in order to create E. She wouldn't have two X chromosomes. Which means Eve had one of her X's break off in order to create Adam. I don't know if they want to hear that. You cannot have an egg without a chicken. It won't work. It needs the warmth of the mother in order for it to hatch. You ain't convincing me that me and Lee and on their own are the beneficial thing. Absolutely not. This is hell. This is hell on earth under male leadership. And y'all want to sit there and keep saying men should be leaders. No, they should be in service to women, obviously. And I think that's what they were made for. And I think men are outside of their purpose in trying to be in a lane that they do not belong in, at least not by themselves. And you can tell it's demonstrated all day, every day. You do not belong in a leadership position on your own. You, Your leadership needs to be managed by someone, someone that's more rational, someone who can think of the bigger picture that you clearly cannot think about. The worst thing is the male ego. I mean, men have been in leadership and we've been in war since they've been in leadership constantly, consistently. 
Men are, listen, men are in rulership and men are the, the uh, as happy as they've ever been. Men are not even happy under male rulership. That's how ineffective they are. They're so ineffective at leadership that they can't even make themselves happy when they are in leadership. That tells you something. Men aren't happy under male rule. Even with all of the privileges, all of the laws of the land that men set, men are unhappy under it. They can't even make themselves happy. But we're supposed to be sitting there like, oh, you make the best leaders. Absolutely not. Y'all should at least be happy and fulfilled. And you're not. You're not. How are you not happy under your own leadership? How are you miserable in taking yourself off the planet under male leadership if you are a man? That right there should tell you that's your number one ind indicator that they are not effective leaders. They can't even make themselves happy under their own leadership. That's effective leadership to constantly be in a state of chaos and war, which is what it is under male rulership. Everybody's unhappy. The planet is unhappy under male leadership. And no, we are supposed to be leaders. Lead yourself out of chaos and war then, bruh. Okay? Lead yourself into fixing the planet rather than destroying it. Lead yourself into happiness. But you're not paying attention to what they're doing and how the planet looks under their leadership, though. It's a problem. I don't think there will be any God except a satanic one who would designate men as leaders, knowing how chaotic and destructive they are, knowing how all they see is war and competition. Absolutely not. The vision and this unity is what men bring. What they have brought is, is certainly what they have brought. You look around you. Look at every single country. All they do is create things that cause division, war, and chaos. That's all they've done. Women are the most sought after creatures on the earth. Think about that. You're, you're very high in demand. You're the only sex on the earth that has creator matter inside of her, in her womb. Okay, um, that's why a lot of scientists are researching placenta and uh, stem cells from the uterus and the womb of women because we are the only one that possess that, right? Um, so remember, whatever you are manifesting, whatever you try to create, whatever you're vibrating, that matter, them stem cells, that dark energy inside your womb is connected to the universe, to the darkness and the blackness that in the sky, to the black matter, dark matter, you can't see the God particle or whatever you want to call it. Your womb as a woman is connected to that. Your spirit is connected to that. Um, so whatever you manifest, if you really are serious about it, it's going to happen for you a lot faster. Um, I've noticed like on one of my manifestation, like on three of my manifestation videos, women tend to have better luck manifesting because they have this energy inside of them that's connected to the universe. So it comes faster to them. Remember that whatever you want, you can have it if you want it and believe and know who you are. You are like you would actually be considered a goddess, a creator goddess, because you have this God particle energy, dark matter energy inside your body. And it creates just like the universe creates and is constantly expanding by dark energy and dark matter. You have that in your body. Remember who you are and you will never let a man mistreat you again. Okay? You will never let a man... It's it's like this. A lot of people don't know who they are, what they are, what they're made of, what their power is. Because society has taken females' power away from her, made her feel like less than, told her she was this, this, and that, you know. But if you reclaim your power and your knowledge of yourself as a woman, you will never let a man treat you that way again because you will know who you are they don't have this in them we do <laughs>